Okay, hi everyone, and welcome to our webinar on migrating your data out of Google Fusion Tables. This is a don't panic guide, so we've included this helpful pug throughout the webinar to remind you not to panic. So why are people panicking? Um, Google Fusion Table, or Google announced that they're turning down Google Fusion Tables on December 3rd. Uh, this means you've got 10 months to migrate your data out of the service and into a suitable replacement. So in this webinar, we are going to compare and contrast a few alternative solutions um, in effort to help you make the decision about where you want to move your data to. And we're also going to show you how to quickly move your data out of Google Fusion Tables and into these alternatives using FME without losing any data quality in the process. So we're your hosts. I'm Tiana Warner, Product Marketing Manager at Safe Software. And I'm Sienna Emery, and I'm a server technology expert. And on the other side of the GoToWebinar control panel, you've got Liz on Q&A and Stephanie as our webinar admin. So feel free to chat us your questions at any time. Um, this webinar will be recorded and uploaded along with the workspaces, so you can access that at any time. So what is FME? Uh, for those of you who are new, FME is a data integration platform. It lets you build automated workflows to pull data from any source transform it to meet your needs, and then load it into any destination. Google Fusion Tables is one of many systems you can read from. Um, FME Workbench, which you can see on the laptop image here, is where you build your workflow to extract data from Fusion Tables and prepare and write it to your um, system of choice. So an FME workspace involves a few components. Um, first, you put down one or more readers to extract the source data. Uh, in our case, we're getting it from Fusion Tables. And then you send the data through a series of transformers to enrich and process it. Um, and you shape the data into the exact output that you want. So FME has, has over 400 transformers. Um, you can browse them at safe.com slash transformers. And you can also see user added ones on hub.safe.com. And then finally, you choose your destination system by adding one or more writers. Um, the final step, then you run the workspace. You can do that on demand. Um, or you can set up an automation using FME server if you need to run it on a schedule or in response to an event. So first, let's understand what we're going to be losing with Google Fusion Tables. Um, as I go through these, consider which of these are important to you. Um, so it provides web-based data visualization and maps, data storage and management from various sources, automatic geocoding of tabular and spreadsheet data, the ability to collaborate on data tables and maps, data sharing and publishing options, basic joining, filtering, aggregating, and querying. And all of this is offered in the cloud and all of this is for free. But you said not to panic. So that's a lot of really great functionality that we're gonna be losing, um, but don't worry, helpful pug. The reason I showed you that is because the first step in choosing your alternative solution is to understand what functionality is important to you. No alternative is going to be exactly the same, but you will be able to get everything you want in some way or another, and you will be able to migrate your data there using FME. So let's jump into some solutions. If your data is spatial, and especially if it's already in a GIS format, it's really straightforward to get it into ArcGIS Online. So on this platform, you can create and share maps that anyone can view in a web browser, and you can use Esri's base maps and analytics to enrich the data. With this platform, you've also got Story Maps, which is a really cool web application that lets you build an interactive story about your data. Um, so I'll just go, actually, yeah. Just close this for a second. I will show you an example that Parks Canada did. So this is what a story map looks like. Um, they've just got the different parks in Canada. You can navigate through, learn about each one. It's got maps that you can click on and interact with. Um, so it's a really cool, powerful, um, fun to use platform. Um, I did try it and I found it super easy. Uh, I picked a template, started uploading points and making my own story map. And I had something going in like 30 seconds. It was awesome. So this is a really nice option. You can see on uh, the Story Maps webpage, it shows you 
the different types that you can create too. So kind of slideshow format, um, a journal you can go up and down. So yeah, a lot of different options there. So that's a nice one. I'll jump back in here. So actually, before I go into the next one, um, we'll turn it over to Sienna for a demo. Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about how you would actually get your data out of Google Fusion tables using FME. So it's quite easy, but I was curious. I just wanted to see who here is completely brand new to FME. So I'm just going to launch a poll right now. Have you used FME before? And I'll just yeah. give about 30 seconds to answer the poll. Yeah. OK, it looks like most people have. Got a few that haven't yet, but most people have. That's good. Yeah, it's great that yeah. you're coming back for this webinar. So if you used FME before, you'll know how easy it is to extract your data. So I have this workbench. And this is all you need to do to extract your data from Google Fusion Tables and read it into any of these three formats, which we'll be talking about today. So this first one, I'm reading in some butterfly data. If you're curious, this is the sample data that they give you when you start a Google Fusion table, so anyone has access to it. So I'm reading in this butterfly data. I'm using this vertex creator to use uh, to get points for X and Y. And then all I'm doing is writing it out to ArcGIS online. And then when you look in ArcGIS online, this is what it would look like. So all your points are there and it's very easy to do. So now we're going to talk about Curdo, I believe. Yeah. So this is another fantastic platform. Um, again, it's super easy and fun to create and share maps in a web browser. They've also got base maps um, from here and Mapbox and such. So um, they also, yeah, they provide the base maps and they also have their own set of powerful algorithms. Um, it's also open source, which is nice because you've got that dedicated community behind it. And then finally, you get access to their specialty, which is generating insight from your data. So this example, uh, you can see just on their home page, um, they have an example of Boston. And you could probably create this map. It's like fully interactive. It has stats on the side and stuff. You could probably create that in just a few minutes. Um, I tried using Cardo with zero previous experience, and I was able to make something similar quite quickly. You just upload your data set and, or connect to it, pick your base map. Um, add a timeline or graph or whatever other widgets you want, and then click publish. And then that's it. You've got a link to share it with anyone. Um, so again, we've got a demo. I'll jump back over to Sienna. Yeah, so <clears throat> I know this is already kind of spoiled because it's very easy. But if you wanted to run this, you could run this for Cardo as well. And again, you're just going directly from that reader to your writer, and that will get all of your data in. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I am using 2019 down here. So you can see we have a visual preview here. So you can actually see the data that you're writing out here, which is really cool. So fancy, so modern. So fancy. Wow. <laughs> and you can actually see the points created as well from the Vertex creator. So it's just, it's very cool. You can make sure that all your data is there, even though I do guarantee it will be there. But here, we're just writing directly from the butterfly data to Cardo. I didn't need to use the vertex creator because in Cardo, you can set the latitude and longitude yourself based on the columns. And you can see here, this is what it looks like. Obviously, if you wanted to do something more fancy, you would need to do a little bit of work. But this is what it looks like when it's just being read in directly. So if you need powerful analytics and insights, um, including charts and graphs, you can also check out business intelligence platforms like Click, Tableau, Power BI, and Google Data Studio. Tableau has a free option, Tableau Public. Um, note with this, you do have to install software as opposed to ArcGIS Online and Cardo, which you can stay in a web browser the whole time. 
Um, but once you have the software, you can make really nice heat maps and charts and graphs. Um, it definitely takes a bit more effort than um, like with BI software than with something like ArcGIS Online or Cardo, but you do get that really powerful visualization um, options and those data insights. So we also have a demo for this. Yeah, so for Click, it is a little bit different. I found the easiest thing to do for me, at least, was to write it out. We have a Click format, and then I also wrote it out to a KML as well. So using these two, I was able to put that data into Click, and then I was both able to see my table and then a map with the points. By just doing the straight Click data, I wasn't able to see the map right away. So that's just something to consider. If you are using Click, I would recommend reading it out to a KML. Sorry, just relaunching my virtual computer with <laughs> Click on it. <laughs> there. So this is what it would look like. I really liked using Click because you can click on different points and it will highlight this is the data that you're looking at. And it does that right away. I did nothing to this data. So I think that is a really cool feature of Click. <clears throat> so yeah, the last thing I wanted to um, talk about here is using a combination of free tools. So you can integrate all of your favorite tools and come up with something that's completely tailored to your needs. Um, for example, you would store your data wherever it fits best, like a spreadsheet or an open source database. Um, you'd pick a cloud system to host it, whether that's uh, something enterprise level like AWS or something simple like Google Sheets. And then you would build a nice web page using a web mapping library, say a free one like Open Layers. Um, and here I do have a blog post um, that goes over some free libraries if you want to um, get some ideas, leaflet, Open Layers, Mapbox. Um, yeah, so this is definitely the most custom solution and one that can be guaranteed to be free if that's important to you. Um, but it does require a few moving pieces. With this option, um, you can use FME to keep all of it running and synchronized. So before we jump into the rest of Sienna's demos, um, we would like to ask you another poll here. For polls. Mm -hmm. Launch poll. So we want to know uh, which solution you think you might use. And if you plan to use something else entirely, please chat us and let us know. So that's cool. I just, yeah. Put even spread there. Okay, yeah. that's good for us to know. Um, so let's jump into the other demos. Okay, perfect. Oh, we missed a pug photo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but you can always go back and look at these slides later in case you wanted to see those pugs again. Yes. <laughs> or maybe we're educational, but mostly for the pugs. Uh, so there's actually two different readers you can use with Google Fusion tables. There's a non-spatial one, and then there's a spatial reader. An important thing to note is for the spatial reader, you'll need to have your latitude and longitude in the same column. Mm -hmm. So in the first demo I did, my latitude and longitude were in separate columns. So I, that's why I needed to use a vertex creator, but it is a very simple solution just to add that vertex creator in if your latitude and longitude are in separate columns. So mm -hmm. it's very easy to use either way. So my first idea for a demo was, okay, it's great. We're able to extract this data really easily However, what if you fully rely on Google Fusion tables and you have hundreds of Fusion tables? As far as I know, to get the data out of Google Fusion tables without FME, you'd have to go in and download each one, which might be annoying, painful, and that's not what we're about here. So that's why we have FME, because it will take in all of this data and then write it out to the correct format no matter what your table looks like, no matter what schema you're using, we can do this. And it's through batch processing with the Workspace Runner. So to create this, to, well, to create this demo, I followed this tutorial, which is at the bottom. So later, if you are interested in doing this yourself, I followed the tutorial. It's very easy to do, but I'll demo it right now. So this actually uses 
two different workspaces in one. So first we have a starting workspace here. So here we have a dynamic reader and writer. We're just reading in our data, setting the schema using the schema setter, and then writing it out dynamically. From there, we have a second workspace. So the job of this workspace is essentially to run the first workspace. And this is using the workspace runner. You can see here, I've set up this demo. So it will run this first workspace. And I can actually set the maximum number of concurrent processes that FME is going to use. So for this, I could set up to seven concurrent processes for FME to run. So say if you just love fusion tables and you have thousands of fusion tables, it's very easy for you to read, to get all that data out of those fusion tables. I'm not setting it because in my case, I'm only running two tables because that's the only, those are the only tables I have. You can see here when I click play, I can select the tables I want to read. So right now I'm reading butterfly data and crime data, but I could select all of them if I did have many tables. They're pretty different data sets. <laughs> <laughs> Butterflies and crimes, the only things I'm interested in. Um, and so you can see here that it did run successfully and the data was produced. It's actually in my click computer. Sorry. It's just taking a little break. Mm -hmm. So I have it in my click. And here is my two different data sets. And as you can see here, the data was successfully read for both of them and the schemas are correct for both. So then I could work with both of these tables later on, and it's just quite easy to use. Another thing I really liked about Google Fusion Table is, was the ability to make cards. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if you guys have seen this before, but you can create cards just really easily with Google Fusion Tables. And I thought, what functionality does FME have that's similar? Well, we have a really cool process, which is you can have an Excel template and then write your data to that template. Mm -hmm. And you can do that over and over again. Uh, so this demo is taking data from Google Fusion Tables and extracting those images from the Google Fusion Tables and actually creating maps with the Google Fusion tables and then writing that out to a work report using Excel and Excel template. So I just wanted to show you the Excel template. This is what it'll look like. So all of our data will be populated in here when the workspace runs. And this is what the workspace looks like. So it is a little more complicated than what I've previously shown you, but it is definitely doable for anyone. First, we have our data which I can inspect here. So it's reading the data in and I can see this is what my data looks like. There's a column called resolved. So the first thing that we're going to do is we have date and time here. We're going to remove that time and check if this has already been resolved. If it's been resolved, we don't wanna run um, a work report for it and just confuse everyone. Next, we have the image fetcher, which is really good when working with fusion tables because it will take that URL that already exists in your fusion table and create an image from it. 
So we can see here, this is the first image, and we can see a graphic within FME itself, which is a really cool feature of 2019. Next, we're going to set the size and position. So it should be the same size and position each time because we want it to fit perfectly in our Excel file. And then we're writing it out to that work order. Next, we're using the HTTP caller. So if you've worked with AP APIs before, the HTTP caller is the transformer you would like to use. Here we're using the Google Maps API to create a static map for us and put it in our work report. So we're using the X and Y coordinates that are in our table to create a static map, which will then go into our report. And again, we're using these attribute managers to set where this information is going to go. That's another handy feature. If you look here, the annotations will change color depending if they're inside or outside of the bookmark, <laughs> which I think is really neat. Uh, so next, we just have our other data that's being read in. We can see here um, that we're reading in the data. And then we're using this data and setting exactly what row and C is the column that it's being set in. And then this is being sent to an Excel file. In the Excel file, we can see here that we're using the attribute names as a column positions, and then we're using that row ID as well. And it'll be fanned out. So for each person, they'll get a different work report, and that's based on the reporter's name. So I can run this now. So it's coming in, it's testing. Anyone that's already been completed, we're not going to produce a map. We're not going to produce a work report. And then we're writing it out. And I can show you what it looks like once it's been completed. So this is what it looks like. You can see the photo of the gra offending graffiti. You can also see where it was located and all the person's information about who reported it. Very nice. Yeah, Good. it's very exciting. <laughs> at least I think it is. I think it's <laughs> cool that you can do this with any data at any time yeah. and you can create something yourself using that Excel template. I think that's a really powerful yeah. tool. Yes. So the final demo I have is Okay, so you do that once. Are you going to create new work orders every time something isn't resolved? Probably not. That's probably not the most efficient use of your time. So I wanted to do automatic card creation. So this will automatically send a work report whenever a new row is added to a Google Sheet. So we're stepping away from Google Fusion tables. I'm pretending like you've already migrated your data out. And you decided to put it into a Google Sheet. And now you just want to edit it every time you get a new row. You want that to be sent. You want a person to receive a work order. Mm -hmm. So anytime I say automate, you need to be thinking about FME server because essentially FME server is a way to automate your workflows. So this we will need to use FME server as well. So here's what my table looks like currently. I have two important rows here. I have one if it's been resolved, and the second one is if the work order has been received. Using Google Sheets, you can actually write scripts. And these scripts will change the sheet or have an action when something is edited or added. So I wanted something to change when column K is edited. So column K here is the last column people should be writing in. So if someone's reporting new graffiti, they should write in column K right here if it's been resolved or not. 
And based on that, the workspace will run. So once they edit column K, we're actually going to call out to our server. And this call out will run a workspace and actually send myself an email to let me know that I need to get on this work order. So let's just try that out. You can take any column, copy the information, And then if I write no here, it's not been resolved, then I should receive an email shortly. So I can view here, I can view my logs. So I can see column K was ed edited, which means I should get an email and there it is. So I've ran this a few times, <laughs> but as you can see here, I get an email with the reporter's name. That's very cool. Yeah. The automation's so easy, just like boom, done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's using something called a data or direct URL, which you can find on server. This is a server I was using. I'm just going to log in. If you are curious about this, I know that might be a little overwhelming at first. Uh, please take the server authoring course. We do go through this. And with these direct URLs, you can insert them into other applications as well. So there's lots of use for them. So I was just using a direct URL, which you can find down here in your works within your FME server. Yeah. All right. So that is the end of our demos. Um, we do have the FME World Tour coming up every spring. We go travel around the world um, to 70 plus cities. So you can check that out, look at the agenda and stuff, safe.com slash world tour. Um, if you are planning to use FME for something non-commercial, um, especially if you're like a student, something like that, you um, might be eligible for a free license of FME desktop. So just contact us. Um, go to fme.ly slash home dash use. You can apply for a free license and we'll be in touch with you. And with that, thank you so much for attending. Um, thank you, Liz. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, let us know if you have questions. And you can always reach us on live chat on safe.com. Thank you, everyone. Bye.